Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable podcast, we've got the usual suspects. Of course, we're very happy to have her back. Feeling better, recovered from the terrible flu, Jeannie Morum. Jeannie, how are you? Doing great. Thank you very much. Great, great. And of course, the always... Uh, you know, just super nice guy that uh, I'm really excited to see in Vegas because it just brings the niceness out of me. Eric Peterson. Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Looking forward to uh, heading out for boot camp here in just a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. If you're listening to this recording, boot camp has already happened because it comes out a week later, but um, we're getting excited. And then, of course, the Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, how are you? I'm great. Happy to be here today and uh, ready to see what we got on the discussion table. Awesome. I know you got to jump early, so we're going we're gonna to do like a speed round cool. round table uh, for you. And then, of course, last, but certainly not least, the man with the mini bat. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net landmodo.com and most importantly not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek scott todd what's up mark you know what i'm excited about what are you excited about a new flight school starts tomorrow newbies i get newbies to like introduce the mini bat to <laughs> and uh i can't wait like i can't wait to see them like eyes wide open, they're excited. And then by the end, because we have like overloaded them with like good material that they won't be able to go to sleep that night. That's what's always great for me is to like see the, the new class come in and to like really feel like I've overwhelmed them so much that they won't, they're so excited they won't be able to sleep as they head out looking for their first assignment. So I'm looking forward to uh, that tomorrow. It starts tomorrow uh flight school and then we have another one scheduled for may wow i love it i love it i love flight school um for those of you that don't know what flight school is learn more go to lanky.com forward slash uh training and uh and check it out so i do want to just quickly let everybody know that uh yesterday i sent out a little uh or actually uh, today i sent out an email um, which if you're listening to this now, it was a week ago. It was the first chapter of Dirt Rich. And um, Eric Peterson gave me some nice feedback. Eric, what did you think of the first chapter? Well, I, I um, read through it this morning and, and my thought was, you know, I, I just felt that it was a really great introduction. Um, gives people the opportunity to kind of know your story and where you came from and um, why you're where you are today. Um, I thought it was nice to show some of the kind of pitfalls and, and things you ran into along the way. And, um, you know, it just shows you're real just like the rest of us and uh, gives us, you know, things we can identify with. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm probably too real. I'm more real <laughs> than, than the rest of you. Like I've made more mistakes than the rest of you. So it's all in there. And, um, I really uh, want to reward the community. So uh, you'll get an amazing deal if you just go to, uh, if you just email support at the and then just have uh, as a subject line, you know, dirt, dirt rich. And um, it's coming out in a few weeks. You're going to get an amazing, amazing value of it. And I'll tell you, you know, writing it is, was not easy. Um, Scott, you've written a book. I mean, the problem with a book is that it's a book and I can't go and then edit it. It's miserable in that sense. Yeah. You can't like, once it's locked and loaded, you're, you're there, uh, you're committed to it. So, you know, <clears throat> all, all, all the little things of, Hey, uh, let's, let's just get it done and we can fix it later. No, not so much. <laughs> yeah, no. And, um, that's why like Eric's feedback was so, uh, you know, good for me because I, I, I feel so vulnerable with it. Like, well, I hope it's good enough because at some point, like, I'm like, I'm never going to get this thing done if I want it to be 
you know, perfect or even great. And I'm usually in my heart just critic. I'm like, well, I, I guess it's good enough. Like it's been 18 months. Like, let's just get this thing done. So I don't know, but hopefully it is. So but please- does, Mark, doesn't it show you like, but doesn't it show you like, um, you know, things don't all new things. They don't come easy. Like you have, you have experience as a writer. Like that's your, that, that was your degree. Right. And so, you know, essentially, you know, like, man, it took a lot longer than what you thought it would. Right. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people is, you know, people think that oh, I'm just going to whip this thing out. It's going to be done easy peasy, no problem. But like, if you stay committed to it and stay focused on it, you can get to what you want to be or to, to, to achieve, but you got to stay, keep the drive, right? Like you got to keep that piece open. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Jeannie, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, you know what, I, I really agree with that. And I think that's why I was interested in having you talk a little bit about your mojo, how you kept that mojo going. And you were by yourself. You didn't have all these great people surrounding you at that time, correct? You were- No, it was, it was all me. Right. It was all me. In fact, I had such a horrible scarcity mentality that if people asked me what I did, I wouldn't tell them, Right. Like, I was like, oh, I do real estate. And like, well, what part of real estate? I'm like, oh, you know, this and that. Like, I was like the most ambiguous person at the party ever. And like, you know, to the point, like my neighbors thought I was a drug dealer. Like, this, guy, this guy lives in this big house. He drives these, these big cars and, and like doesn't seem to be doing much. And um, it, was, it, was not, it was not great. Uh, Tate, you should be writing a book called The Youngest Real Estate Mogul on the Planet. Uh. No, uh, I'll leave the, the, uh, the writing for you guys right now, but maybe in the future. But I imagine it's, it can't be as easy. After all, this isn't a Craigslist ad that you're writing here that you can just throw out there and, and you know, see if people like it. So uh, I've gotten through a little bit of it, and I like the first chapter. I, I really like it. I'm not all the way done with it, so uh, more feedback to come. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, one of the chapters – in Dirt Rich is a chapter called Kaizen. And it's actually a, a chapter in uh, the second book I'm writing called Coax the Cat, which is a companion book to Dirt Rich, um, which I'm really not ready to talk too much about yet. But that's also a chapter. And there's, well, this, this idea of continuous improvement. And we had a uh, coach's call uh, last Friday. And we we're talking about, well, how can we improve the coaching program? And one of of the main uh, elements of that was in the software project we use is Basecamp. And the great thing about Basecamp is that all the coaches live in that project and we're not filling up anyone's email. So everything lives in Basecamp. Everything's, everything's searchable and archivable. Like they're like, oh wait, what did Tate say about that county? It's all lives in Basecamp. But the problem with Basecamp is that it's like, you're like siloed in a way. And so there's not this sort of sense of, um, community in the coaching program. And so we solved that by creating a new exclusive coaching Facebook group. And within that coaching Facebook group, every month the coaches are going to do an advanced module uh, and advanced learning just for the coaching clients. So I think we're really going to add a lot more value to the coaching group. And um, I, I think it's going to be great. Uh, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Well, I know we've already been talking about certain modules that uh, I'm tasked with putting together. And, um, you know, I I think uh, it's going to be very beneficial for the coaching clients. I mean, to have a resource to, you know, learn some tips about, you know, county research or automation or whatever it might be uh, for that particular month. I think it'll be a great resource for them and it's uh it'll be exclusive from what I understand for the for the coaching clients so it's a kind of a an extra benefit for them and um just help them get up to speed that that much quicker. Yeah, absolutely and I think it allows all the coaches to really have a better handle of not just their coaching clients and and where they're at where we can be a lot more proactive as opposed to being reactive with them. 
um, and then sort of treat them as, a, as an entire community where everyone's sort of accountable to that whole coaching group where, you know, Jeannie's not going to want to wake up and be like, well, you know, I didn't mail this week. <laughs> You're letting out the whole coaching program. <laughs> right. So um, I, I think that extra bit of accountability is going to be interesting as well. And then of course the, um, the one-on-one aspect where, you know, Eric might be doing um, his, his advanced module and then you can go in and say, Hey, um, I had a few questions and then you book that one-on-one time with Eric and do even a deep dive with him um, one-on-one. So I think it's the best of both worlds. I'm excited about it. Scott, Todd, what are you most excited about regarding the new, the new coaching format? Well, I think that the, um, the fact that, you know, we can kind of solve some, some uh, bigger issues in terms of education, you know, like I think that one of the things that really defines coaching is that one-on-one relationship that you have with your coach, right? Someone who's going to know what you're doing and, and kind of, um, you know, kind of help you drive, drive to where you want to go. I think that one of the funny things about coaching though, uh, and you mentioned it was the the silos that it created because, you know, like people lived with a project with, with, um, with their coach, but what they didn't have was they didn't have necessarily full relationship with all of the coaches. I think that's kind of what the, the really the Facebook group is really designed to do is to, it's designed the, the coaching Facebook group is designed to get you that interaction with the coaches, but also now you have a new education component in there that we can, kind of help to, to lower the, um, the, the knowledge gap, because look, you know, some, some people have expertise in other areas that, that people don't. Right. So, you know, if you were to say, Hey, Scott, you know, teach me on how to do uh, an eBay listing and, and sell on eBay while I've done it, I'm not necessarily the best person for that. And so now we can say, Hey, you know, this is a need from the, from the coaching students and boom, we can have a education program created for it. So it's, it's really the opportunity for continuous, continuous education. Yeah, absolutely. And then we also get that sort of the collective intelligence just in the coaching group as well, where, you know, someone might ask uh, a question that everyone can benefit from uh, that answer as well. Kind of, you know, we do have the mastermind group, but the mastermind group, um, people are all different levels, right? From toolkit to flight school to one-on-one coaching. And so, when you have everybody sort of at the same level, it's, it's a little bit different, I think. Uh, and the fact that it's so much smaller, you can't really hide at all in, in that group, um, which I think is nice. Taylor Litchfield, what are you most excited about? You know, I'm excited about the fact that it's going to be intimate. And that's one of the things I really like right now about office hours is you get a group of people on a call and we're able to work together and solve each other's problems. And now we're going to be able to do that on a much larger scale. You're going to be able to have Eric chime in and Scott and me and you and, and every other coach available. And if somebody's not an expert in one specific area, we're going to get somebody who is an expert to help you out. So it's, I'm excited. I think it's going to bring our community even closer together, it's going to make us all hold ourselves to a higher standard and be more accountable for our actions or the things that we don't do in our business. So on top of that, and, and the fact that it's kind of this exclusive networking room, I think that's going to be really, really helpful to a lot of people. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And then Jeannie Morm, as a coaching client, what are you looking forward to with this Kaizen? Well, I, that was sounding like an infomercial to me because I'm really excited because I do feel like I'm in a silo. That's why I've, I've enjoyed being on the podcast here because I do feel alone out there sometimes. And if I feel alone, I know there are, the, there are others that feel the same way. And I also love the accountability piece because, you know, some days that's what gets me up during the day or gets me up in the morning going, oh my gosh, I have to get something done before I, you know, have that conference call with Mike, you know, so I have to get that done. So it really keeps me going. And I, I actually am at a point where I could be moving faster. So I think being in that group would really help us out a lot, especially me yeah. personally. I think that's great, which kind of leads us to our next topic, which is what happens when you've got momentum and let's say like life gets in the way, you know, Jeannie got the flu, Uh, maybe, you know, Tate goes fishing for a week, you know, maybe Scott goes and flies, you know, to the Bahamas and and takes a couple weeks off, you know, Eric is building his wife 
or build his wife a new office for in four days, right? And you've got these these sort of life breaks that, um, you know, you know how it is. Like after after you've been working out every day, and you you know that once you go back to the like you stop for like a week, and you're gonna go back to the gym, and you're anticipating that pain sort of the next day, it's like, you kind of lose your mojo. It's like, well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll start Monday, right? And then, then I'll, I'll go back. And then Monday comes around, I'm like, well, you know, my, my sister's in town, so I'll start the next Monday. And that way, you know, something like that. And pretty soon you've, you've lost all this momentum. So Eric Peterson, how do you, what, what are some of the, the things that you do so you don't lose your mojo and you, you keep the momentum going when there are sort of these life breaks in your business? Well, I would say that, um, you know, I just, I kind of create habits and, and try to find a way to spend time on, on the business every day. And when I have those situations where I might be out for four days or whatever and not really be spending any time in front of the computer or what have you, um, as soon as, you know, kind of things are back to normal. I want to get back into those habits and, and, um, get right back at it. You know, um, you can't just ignore those things and let them go because the longer that that goes, the harder it is to get back to it. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, really that's it for me. It's just getting back into it, you know, going back to those, those habits you were doing beforehand and just, just pick up, pick up where you left off. Don't, don't be overwhelmed by it. Just, just get back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tate Litchfield, how about you? You know, I, I second what Eric said about habits, but I think it's also important to keep it fun and keep this, keep this business um, kind of exciting because after you do it for a while, you realize you are doing the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, if you're used to a lot of stimulation, this, this is kind of a boring work environment for you. But uh, I think there's ways to keep it fun. And one of those things that I look forward to is, you know, my, my meetup with the, with the team and with uh, the other land geekers at boot camp every couple months. And, and that keeps it fresh. That helps me recharge my batteries and get it going again. I'll be going to that regardless of my, uh, my coaching or anything. If that's where people are meeting and talking land for three days, I'd be there. And uh, that helps me a lot. I think, um, you know, working with new people and just, uh, I don't know, knowing that it's for the greater good. It's something that just has to get done. And sometimes that's just the way work is. And you don't want to get too uh, complacent or, or lazy with it because certain things like your mailing and your marketing, it's not necessarily fun, but it does need to get done every single day, no matter what. And like Eric, I just have a habit of doing those things without fail. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Scott Todd? Wait, Scott, you're on mute. Sorry about that. I, I think that um, I think the fact that you just keep moving, right? Like keep moving, keep getting energized. Life is going to get in the way, and. Um, I think the, the reality is, is that if you build your business properly with, you know, teams of people, the business is going to continue to go so that, you know, if you're out of, out of, uh, out or enjoying vacation or whatever, you, you might miss some things, but the business is going to keep growing because you've built it to be a machine. And that's ultimately, I think what a lot of people fail to do is they, they fail to create the machine in their business, right? Like the, the, the business really should operate whether you're there or not. But until you've developed that, that business, I think that the best thing to do is really to have that, that deep down uh, motivation or the deep down why, right? Because when, you, when you're so motivated to accomplish this goal, there's nothing going to stop you, right? Like life can get in the way, but that's when you're breaking out your own mini bat and you're like, you're shutting it down because you're like, no, I've got to achieve this goal. This is not negotiable. And, you know, I think that, I think that it's that burning desire, Mark, you gotta, like, if you don't have the burning desire over something, well, then, you know, your goal, I'm going to sound, I'm going to probably steal something from Grant Cardone, but look, if you're, if you don't have the desire for something, your goal is not big enough. 
because you know essentially your goal should be so large that they by themselves motivate you and i'm not saying to work when you're sick or whatever but it's amazing the the it's amazing when your goals are so large and larger than life you feel compelled to get them done at all cost and i think that that's kind of like the motivation that you need yeah absolutely i mean i think that you took my my answer but i'll go back to what what Jeannie said. And when I first started, you know, I didn't have systems. I didn't have automation. Um, I might've had one VA at one point, but I was doing everything myself. And there would be those days where um, I wouldn't feel like doing much, right? Or I'd feel like I, I was losing my mojo. And it all kind of came back to what Scott would say, because I had, you know, three young children. I had a wife that didn't work. And my purpose was way bigger than me. And so for me, my, my big burning desire was never to have to update my resume ever again. And I knew if I didn't work in that business to the point where I didn't get it done, I was at risk of having to go back to a job. And so it didn't matter for me what I would have to do. And eventually you get to the point where like, your feelings don't matter anymore. Like I'll, I'll listen, I'll go on YouTube and I'll listen to like a motivational speech, but how I feel at that moment is irrelevant. I don't feel like working out every day, right? I'm, it's painful. I don't feel like writing a chapter in a book. It's miserable to look at a blank page. I don't feel like talking to Tate some days because he just makes me feel badly about myself. Why didn't I start when I was his age, right? But I'll do it anyways because it's important to me. Tate brings me wisdom even though he's 100 years younger than me, right? <laughs> if I'm working, you know, on the business, it's going to move the needle in my life. And then eventually you get to that point where your purpose just grows and grows and you get to that point like what, what Scott said, like your goal has to be big enough to excite you. And even on those days you don't feel like doing it, you're going to do it anyway because you're working for something way bigger than just yourself because eventually you do get comfortable right and with com with being comfortable and not having a big enough goal a big enough purpose you're not motivated to do anything because you don't need to be right so Jeannie does that help yeah and you know I'm going to add something to that too because I've been working on this a little bit because working on developing this business a lot of the stuff I have to do is is new and I'm I'm learning for the first time so it can be really scary for someone like myself who's a feeler. And when you talked about, you don't feel like it, I go, ah, you know what, I'm going to go clean the, clean the toilets, or I'm going to do laundry, or I, I find all these other excuses. So I get the big picture and everything and the goals, but sometimes it gets down to the just apps, just digging it and doing the job, right? So I found that's where I was getting stuck. And you know what I found? I found Mel Robbins principle. And I don't know if you are familiar with her, but it's the five, five, second rule. Three, five yeah. four, three, two, one. And I will sit and um, have to look, go look at it, a county, or I'll get an email from somebody on eBay and they want, they want some information. I'm like, Oh, you know, I really don't want to do that. And then right away I'll go five, four, three, two, one, and I'm up getting it done. So I found that tool for me will get these little things done. That seems so annoying because I'm a big picture person and I want to own lots of land and, and lots of acreage, but doing the little work right now is annoying. And so that's how I'm learning to overcome it. And now trying to get my momentum going um, is just tricking my brain. No, I think that's great advice. And you know, whenever we have to embrace the suck and do, do something that we're not comfortable doing, we want, it's just natural. We, we avoid it. That's what procrastination is. Procrastination is just avoiding any type of pain. You're, there's some type of pain that's involved with that activity. So we just avoid it, right? Um, and I think knowing it and sort of leaning into it and then doing it anyways, and uh, eventually that pain goes away because you get so much better at it. But it, it is, I mean, I mean, it is hard. It just is. And the fact is, like, it's a simple model, but it ain't easy. And I think that's what makes this uh, so special is that it, you know, it is hard and we want it to be hard because if it weren't hard, it wouldn't be valuable. So it's, uh, I think what you said was really, really interesting and important. Um, last subject before we get to Eric's 
tip of the week. Eric Peterson, do you sell on eBay? Uh, on occasion, I do, yes. How do you deal with eBay flakes? They win the bid and then they disappear and don't pay you and you're stuck with that $35 listing fee. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, you know, when you're working on eBay, that's just, that's part of selling on eBay. I mean, there's, there's tactics you can take to try and avoid that. For example, when someone bids, you contact them right away through eBay's messages. You try to open a dialogue with them, get them talking, make sure they understand the terms, all those kinds of things. Um, and then of course, if they don't pay, um, you can offer second chance offers if there were bidders behind them and, and so on. But ultimately, I mean, it's just, it's just part of eBay and it's a headache. And a lot of times it means you eat, you know, the listing fee and you, you go back and you try it again. And sometimes you have to try it again, but um, that's just the way it goes. Scott Todd, what do you do? Well, I think you can, um, there's things that you can do to minimize it. One, you can, um, you know, re reach out to them when they place a bid and say, hey, I see that you placed a bid and, um, you know, I just want to confirm how this thing is going to work. So you're reaching out to them. And then if they don't, res and you could say something like, hey, respond back to me, um, you know, that you, that you agree and understand. And then if they don't respond back to you, well, then uh, you probably have an answer. <laughs> and the answer is, is that uh, they're probably going to be a flake to begin with. Um, the other thing that I've done is, um, you know, I've, I've kind of gone into the settings in eBay and basically said, hey, listen, they need to have a PayPal account attached to their eBay listing um, in order for them to bid. So if they, if they don't have a PayPal account, they can't even see the auction. So again, it's not just having it, it's tying it back to their, um, to their, to their profile. And I know that we're not going to, you know, accept PayPal as the payment. I'm just saying that Craigslist or eBay will actually go out there and look and say, uh, this person's not having their PayPal committed to it. It's probably a scammer uh, or somebody that's, that's there. It could be a bot, who knows, you know, a, a Russian troll, uh, you know, essentially, but the fact that they've taken the time and connected their PayPal profile to their eBay profile is a pretty good indication that they are in fact a real person, right? So it's not a fake account. And then I also limit, um, you can't limit people based on having zero, um, you know, rating. But when I see people that have a zero rating, I'm again, contacting them to say, Hey, I want to make sure that you understand how this thing works. And, uh, then, then from there, you, you'll find that the, the gap will get closed. That's great answer. Tate, anything that you're doing differently than Scott? No, we take the similar approaches. I mean, if I don't get a response from somebody, that's kind of a, that's kind of a signal to uh, cancel the bid and move on. So that's, I pretty much do the same thing as Scott and Eric said, but unfortunately sometimes you're just gonna, you're gonna lose occasionally on eBay, but it doesn't mean it's a bad platform by any means. Yeah, I mean, Jeannie, I would even take it a step further and have um, like, I use a text for a text auto expander. And so whenever someone would bid, I would just, you know, type in BD and it would say, hey, eBay bidder, thanks so much for your bid and your interest in our property. If you want us to end this auction now, click this link and have a geekpay.io link. And once we accept payment, you are the winning bidder and we'll end the auction. And that really, uh, sometimes people will just, will just do it. And then you kind of know like, holy cow. And, and you can even explain, you know, oftentimes the auction will end and people won't pay. So we want to make sure you're really serious. You're really for real. This is a great buy right now at this bid plus the $4.99 recording fee. Here's your link to make payment. Once you make payment, we will end the auction with you as the winner. And so that can also help mitigate those eBay flakes by trying to get them to buy before the auction ends. Does well, that help? Yeah. And I had a situation that happened last night. Um, I've had eBay 
um, bidders that don't follow through. And so I was closing on one last night and I was watching it. It was three days and I'm not exaggerating. I commu I was communicating with, with one of them. His name is Danny. He asked me questions. I always got back to him like within five minutes, but five minutes before that eBay closed, that um, bid closed, someone came out of nowhere and they have zero, you know, feedback or, you know, zero stars. So I went to take a look at him even closer. He had just created an account yesterday and I didn't trust him. So I went through eBay, reported it, said, could you please remove him? And they asked why. And I explained, they just built a, he just created an account. I'm not feeling comfortable. And they actually removed his bid because he was the highest bidder, removed it. And then I was able to, um, then the second bidder, Danny, got the bid. Well, then after it closed, I got an email from the gentleman saying, hey, I was the highest bidder. What happened? <laughs> awesome. So I, I said, well, I want to always be ethical in everything I do, but I, I'm so tired of people not following through. And I just said, you know what? There was another bidder and I'm, we're going with that one. And they were fine. And the, the one that did win the bid has been amazing. I've been communicating with him all day. He's, he is so excited. And that's one of my favorite parts of this job is working with the buyers because he can't wait to get to that property. That's amazing. Good, good ROI on that deal? Yep. Yep. Almost 400%. But I bought it real but I bought, I bought it pretty reasonable. It was really, really reasonable. And, uh, but I also like um, Scott's tips and, and creating the settings in eBay, which I haven't done yet. So I love that tip. It's great. Great idea. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that, uh, that brings us to the round table tip of the week and Philip Ma, if you're listening, you just get one tip this week, Eric Peterson. What Wait, do you got? should we just call this the Philip Ma tip? Yeah, let's just call it the Philip Ma tip of the week. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, this week's tip of the week is going to be a book by the name of Dirt Rich. You might have heard of the author. Never uh, heard of it. He's, he's known around here. Um, but uh, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I did read the first chapter. I think it's going to be a, a great book about um, kind of getting started with land investing. So, um, I would recommend pre-ordering, uh, email support at the and that's all I got. I, I bet you, Mark, you I bet you love this tip. Don't you? I, no, I love the fact that Eric was so comfortable and calm kind of plugging, right? That's hard to do. Like I do it all the time, but like, it's, it's, it's hard to plug. So, um, thank you, Eric. And uh, speaking of plugging, by the way, today's podcast is sponsored by the Minibat. If you don't know what the Minibat is, that means you have not learned anything about Scott Todd's flight school and his, his basically companion, the Minibat. If you want to learn about the power of the Minibat, you've got to schedule a call with Mike Zano or Scott Bossman and get the details. Because like uh, Scott said, April flight school is over. But we're going to start filling up May. So go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call with Mike or Scott Bossman and learn about the power of the mini bat and how it gets you to execute in real time in this business. How about that, Scott Todd? I think that's great, Mark. Great job. <laughs> does, it, does the mini bat have a name? Uh, mini bat. Batman. Batman. There it is. All right. <laughs> Eric Peterson, are we good? Yeah, we're good. All right. I'm so excited to, uh, to see you in a few days. Tate, are we good? Yeah. Yeah, really good. I like this podcast a lot. All right. Jeannie? I'm fantastic. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. Thank you. Uh, and we love it. And we're so happy to get that uh, perspective from not just a woman, but a newbie as well. So... It's great to have the, uh, a little bit of land geek diversity on the podcast. And of course, Scott Todd. We're great, Mark. We're great. All right. So hopefully we made it before Tate has to leave. And I just want to thank all the listeners. Please do us a small favor. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. 
Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. So please do that. And everyone, Tate, Scott, Eric, can't wait to see you in a few days. Vegas, baby, Vegas. If you want to start to see Jeannie Morum, who's going to be at the Scottsdale Boot Camp, just yeah. go to the link um, forward slash boot camp and register now. August is going to be here before you know it. So do that. Are right, you ready? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. There you go. That's uh, pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Jeannie, what's for lunch? Uh, just soup. Just, oh, yeah. You're recovering from the flu. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm really jealous. I won't be able to see all you guys out there in Vegas. But I'll, I'll see you in Scottsdale. You should be jealous. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> well, she's not buying a tape. You see that? We're, we're going to do yeah, like, a, like uh huh. Yeah, sure. <laughs> on, on Friday night, we're going to do like a live nightcap. So um, that's going to oh, be really fun. Wow. Yeah. Although the pressure is going to be on because like we're going to be asking people, hey, how was the first day of boot camp? And hopefully they're going to be like, uh, great. <laughs> we have to pre vet their questions, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, and I just spoiled it for everybody. Gosh, dog it. No, uh, no one listens to this portion of it anyway. And by the way, it's already over with. So, That's boot camp's true. already over with. So, boot camp's already over. With. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, they won't. They won't know that either. No, they won't know because it's, like it's all good. Of, uh, Maybe. Re, you know. Repeats, uh, rewind, rewinds. Uh, video of it. I you know, know, I I think. Uh, I think people might be watching this thing over and over and over again. They might be binging on it. It's true. It's true. Tato, we got, yeah. we got food lined up? Yeah, I think so. Just depends uh, how tired we are, but I got a couple ideas for us. Is Scott going to be able to eat? Yeah, he'll be comfortable. Scott's my okay. boy. I'm going to take care of him. All right. All right. Cool. All's good with me. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, everybody. And, uh, See you in a few days. Have fun. Thanks.